Hello and welcome to episode number 21 of Tradecraft Security Weekly. I'm your host, Bo Bullock. I'm joined today with Mike Felch. And uh, today we're going to be talking about leaking Windows creds externally via MS Office. Now, we're not talking about just like hosting a phishing page where we're going to try to fish user creds. This is a, a pretty new technique that, that you have developed combining a few different things. Right. And uh, so, Mike, you can take this away because uh, this is all you, man. <laughs> all right, cool. Okay, so why is this not working? Okay, so a little bit of background. Um, so I was recently on a red team, and um, and we were up against some pretty good security controls. Um, they were running Mimecast for email, and actually they had the advanced security suite. So um, they're no, blocking a lot of your your typical yeah. document payloads that you're trying to get in. Yep. So sending them documents with DDEs. Um, with macros, everything was being detected mm -hmm. and kicked back. Um, if they had external links um, in the email that we were trying to fish them to another page, they were getting blocked. Um, if we were trying to impersonate any of the employees, they were getting blocked. Um, so we, we were kind of up against the beast um, externally as it rel relates on phishing. So mm -hmm. uh, we had to come up with some innovative ways, did some research um, on your, just your traditional obfuscation for DDEs and your macros and everything. Um, so that's kind of the backstory. Um, and um, so what I ended up stumbling across was a blog that um, discussed using frame sets. Um, frame sets were a way back in the day, um, early HTML4 days, where you could embed content and frame the content um, using a relationship to another page, and you can kind of include it into, um, into your homepage. And so using these frame sets and these frames, we were able to, uh, to load a remote DDE um, that we were hosting externally. And this obviously isn't the, the scope of this episode, but it was an interesting way of um, using embedded DDEs and remote docs to bypass um, the Mimecast filters, which mm -hmm. was really cool. Um, so a little bit about the frame sets. These were introduced a while back, and um, you know Microsoft Word actually used to be a HTML editor. And so I stumbled across this blog that kind of outlined using these frame sets um, in a Microsoft Word document and then, um, and which which worked, which was really mm -hmm. cool. Um, but then I also remembered seeing a a, a tweet from Python Responder mm -hmm. about using Responder externally with the UNC Pass with Microsoft Edge. And so I was thinking, well, what if we combined HTML frame sets with a UNC path, but set Responder up externally so it's listening on the web. Um, and to grab hashes. To grab the hashes that, mm -hmm. that come through or to do some NTLM relaying or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of what we did. We took the frame sets, um, combined it with that 20-year-old bug, um, threw it into a Word document, and then and then sent it on. Um, the cool thing with this is that it, it affects pretty much all Windows versions because this NTLM um, hash leaking has been around for a really long time. Mm -hmm. The other thing is it also affects Microsoft Office because for since HTML was used in Microsoft Office, they've supported frame sets. Hmm. Um, so using Responder and combining this into um, a, a doc and embedding that UNC path, so you open it up, it's gonna it's gonna hit that um, on the back end as it's loading. Mm -hmm. um, and the cool thing with it is, if you change the U, the file name of that um, that UNC path, you can make it look like an error message or like a loading message of Windows updates. And so I'll show you that here in a second. Okay. Um, but all you gotta do is get that doc to a domain admin who opens it. They don't have to enable anything. So all the traditional teaching people, once again, to not enable macros, mm -hmm. it doesn't even matter. And the the whole like uh, hitting a, a file share or, or any sort of UNC path via like a, a file uh, colon forward slash forward slash link, like that's not, that's been known for a while. Like Absolutely, that's, it's been a bug since IE. Yep, IE uh, three or four. Actually, yeah. You know what? I have it. Let me pull it up here real quick. So. Um, I have uh, this page here pulled up from, from insecure.org. 1997. Yeah, March 1997, Internet Explorer was leaking, uh, was leaking hashes. So you can imagine, I mean, this is, this is back every version of Windows, um, and, and this is just using the file colon um, version of the, mm. the UNC path. Now, the cool thing with it is you could still use file colon forward slash forward slash, and it'll try... Um, over port 80 or over your um, your SMB shares. So um, both will actually work um, using it. I'm going to demonstrate it here in a second just using the back ticks, but, um, but you can see uh, or you could plant that passwords doc 
somewhere like on mm-hmm. Pastebin and watching everybody kind Try of to hit go it on the internet. Yeah, so <laughs> let's let me show you what it looks like. So the first thing that um, that you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to um, I got some files that are already here, but you're gonna want to create a new doc real quick uh, with Microsoft Word, um, and you can call it passwords because. Because that's what that's, everyone wants to yeah. open. So you open your doc. Um, you do want to put a space or something because it's going to generate the back end because a doc X is just a zip file with a bunch of XML. Mm-hmm. So by doing by editing it and then saving it, you can open it in your archive manager. I'm just going to use 7-zip here. Um, but you can see all of the files that make up that doc X. Um, what I want to bring you to is this Word directory right here. Um, you'll see this web settings.xml. Um, I have one already pulled up here, but all you would do is drag this over um, and then open it up in your editor. And uh, and what you're going to see is this. So all I've added is this right here, this frame set. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Um, so when you when you pull it up, this is what you would see. Mm-hmm. Um, so all I'm going to do is put it in there, and what you'll see is you get the frame set here. You get your frame, and you could add multiple frames if you wanted to. Um, but notice this R ID one. This is going to link to a relationship. Okay. Um, so we're going to save that, um, and then we're going to create a web settings um, Now notice I have this UNC path right here, and I have a really long file name because this is going to kind of trick. Microsoft Word into demonstrating a or to showing a message. So I'm putting a bunch of spaces here to kind of push the extension off the screen. But you can see I'm just using um, my external UNC path with a really long file name that says to check for Microsoft updates. Um, you're going to save that web settings.xml.rails and then back in your archive, you're just going to drag over your web settings.xmls file. You're going to save it. You're going to go into your RELS folder, and notice this one doesn't have one, and you're going to drag this RELS file over here. Um, and so your relationship here is the RID1, which is tied back to the frame set. It's going to load the content from this location. Mm-hmm. Well, because Microsoft Office is automatically going to try to authenticate to a UNC path, it's going to pass its hashes um, when this document is opened. So I'm going to close it down. I'm just going to load it in a VM real quick. So I'm going to copy this file. Here, and what I'm also going to do here is I'm going to load, um, I already have um, my server here. I'm going to send a responder and and listen in verbose mode. So we're going to see a bunch of the hatches. And now we're just going to sit here and wait. This is open on the internet. It's external. So if anybody hit it right now, they would see it. Um, And all I'm going to do is open this doc. So you need to be doing these live apparently. Yeah. Get more and, password ashes. Right. <laughs> so you see where it's saying contacting the UNC path oh, to yeah. check for Microsoft Office updates. Nice. And so right off the bat, we got hashes. And if you notice, I didn't enable anything. Yeah, you didn't have I to, didn't have to do anything. I just got hashes. And you're, it's raining hashes. It's raining. They're, they're <laughs> pouring in. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the demo. Um, and you see it's still loading. Um, and then you open the dock and there's nothing. Um, so eventually it'll, it'll just stop trying to load. Yep and move on to actually getting the document open. Right. So if you change the UNC to like a really nice phishing domain name mm-hmm. that make it look like it's a Windows update. Yeah. Um, or if you wanted to change the backslash backslash host to file colon forward slash forward slash host, that way it looks like it's fetching something mm-hmm. uh, of a URL type. Um, and then you're good. You're good to go. And then on the back end, now you have just a bunch of hashes that are um, that are here. And these are... Proceed to crack. Yeah, proceed to crack mm-hmm. or, or uh, other fun stuff. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, so with that, a couple other ideas. Um, I noticed that, uh, and I haven't done this yet. I just I've seen some. Uh, I seen a, a GitHub repository that was using um, NTLM v2 or NTLM um, hashes mm-hmm. with like Responder or Envy, and then using Exchange Web Services with a SOAP call mm-hmm. to do relaying to send email or to backdoor um, mm-hmm. a user's account. Um, the other thing that you could do too is you could also use this with the DDEs, like I was saying earlier. Um, so you could do like multiple frames within that document and do one for the DDE, so that you could f- you could fetch a remote document 
that has a DDE in it. That way, whenever those um, endpoint security is scanning the document when it gets executed, it's not seeing it's not anything local. Right, it's, it's not scanning local. remotely. Right. Um, so you could do that. Um, the other cool thing what you could do is you could plant these in like um, in G Drive with G Suite mm -hmm. because you could you could share a file with anybody, and if you don't notify them that they have a shared file, you could just basically plant um, a docx Passwords, file. Yeah. yeah, passwords, salaries, yeah, salary information, yeah, yeah, and then you know pull them to it or something. Nice. Um, to get it that way, um, or you could potentially even use other Office files because there's other ways you can embed these, like in Publisher. And Beautiful. I mean, that's like that. That technique is like what exactly we've done the Red Team. It's a perfect way to get around security protections. You were on you were on a, a Red Team assessment that required more advanced techniques to, to actually right get somewhere. Yes. And uh, what you did like got around certain protections. You were able to get a little bit further because you were able to get password hashes of users. Right. Yep. And we were able to get documents opened on the inside. Presumably, like let's say they had an open VPN or something uh, that was single factor. Right. Then you know you could crack a password. Now you've got VPN, VPN access. access. Yeah. Yep. You know you can have all these email protections in the world, but you know if you have single factor VPN, it's a bad day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Cool. So on the mitigations, um, you could do this thing called NTLM blocking, which I put a warning there because Microsoft warned you against doing this because it could have catastrophic effects. It breaks on, windows, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Block NTLM. Um, the other thing that they have is you could audit. You could do NTLM auditing mm -hmm. to see when hashes are leaving your, your network. Um, the other thing that I've seen that, um, and I haven't actually used this yet, but there's a group policy that has some NTLM um, protocol settings where you could um, add where you want hashes to be allowed to go, um, which will be helpful for That'd like be, whitelisting. Yeah, you have to whitelist that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of makes it a little tricky. Which that could be that could be tedious depending on how big your network is. Yeah, but having insight at least into what's you know where hashes Absolutely. are leaving would be would be super useful. Um, the other thing is um, you know Microsoft knows about their Office products leaking through UNCs, mm. um, and they actually came out to, with NTLM blocking, I believe, to combat that problem. Um, so while this is a feature of Office. Don't look for Microsoft to fix this. I don't think this is going to happen. In mm -hmm. fact, I think this is, you know, there's been some Black Hat talks where people have been disclosing um, NTLM hash leaking um, over the years. So the fact that this is a new vector to, to use, um, I don't anticipate them probably doing really much with this. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of the it's awesome stuff. Cool. So, hey, if you're on a red team and uh, you're having trouble phishing uh, for creds or having trouble getting any phishing emails in, you know, this might be another option for you. Um, so hopefully that helped out. Um, and, you know, we'll be doing some more of these episodes like this. So uh, we'll see you next time. That's, uh, that's it for this edition of Tradecraft Security Weekly. Yeah. Thanks.